Hello and welcome to this next flipped preaching video. My name is Andy and this is the passage for Easter Sunday. So we're uh, uh, even more than usual it feels like we're going ahead because we haven't had the rest of Holy Week yet but anyway we'll, we'll stick with the pattern. So the passage for Easter Sunday this year is Mark 16 1 to 8. So we can have a look at the resurrection story um, as Mark tells it. Remember Mark was the first gospel written so this was the first written account of the, the resurrection, what, what happened. Um, there's a sheet um, which I encourage you to, to print off if you have the means to and to, to go through and closely look at the, the Bible text and also these three verses from the Old Testament which I think are really really interesting from Malachi to Samuel and Psalm 30. Okay so first thing I wanted to draw out from this is the the motif of the morning. Um, it makes it really clear that when the Sabbath was over um, the three women who were present at the crucifixion um, went to anoint the body of Jesus. It says very early on the first day of the week when the sun had risen. It emphasises again and again that this is early in the morning. And in the Old Testament there is a, there's a long strain of, uh, there's a long sort of thread of the idea that one day God will act and God will be seen like a new morning. So in, in Malachi 4 it says the sun of righteousness shall rise and it sun as in the the star which our planet orbits um, is used as a as a metaphor for Jesus here the sun of righteousness will rise with healing in its wings. Uh, in 2 Samuel David um, the last words of David um, were this hopeful vision of one day there would be a son who would follow on and not Solomon but a, a different son who would one day rule justly and it says he is like the sun rising on a cloudless morning gleaming from the rain on the grassy land um, and in Psalm 30 um, it says weeping may linger for the night but joy comes with the morning there's this there's this idea that one day God will do something and it'll be like the morning breaking and we get that in this passage Mark was well aware of this and brought this really into his way of of telling it um, there's also a theme connected to that of newness it says really clearly this was the first day of the week this is the first day of the week and a week would have brought to mind the um, the Genesis story of the, the seven days of creation. So this is like a new creation, a new thing happening. There's a theme of newness running through this. Um, when the, the women go to the tomb, they find that the stone has been rolled back, everything has shifted, and they're, they're met not by Jesus, but by what we presume Mark uh, was described as an angel. And they're met by a young man dressed in a white robe. Why a young man? Perhaps that's because God is doing a new thing. This is about newness and youth and freshness. And this young man tells the, the women that they need to go and tell the others and they need to go to Galilee and Jesus will meet them there. They don't get to see Jesus in this resurrection story. But then it ends in the weirdest way. I think it's a weird way and I think other people have agreed with me. It says they they went out and fled from the tomb for terror and amazement had seized them and they said nothing to anyone for they were afraid. The end. That's how Mark's gospel ends with the woman not saying anything because they were frightened. It's a very odd ending to the book and if you look in a paper version of the Bible, you've probably got two different alternative endings. They're sometimes called the shorter ending and the longer ending. But both of these were written a long time after the first one in an attempt to kind of give a nice happy ever after ending to it. Um, and they're, they're written a very different style. They're clearly not the original, the original author. Um, so what happened here? Maybe the end fell off. Maybe um, the last few pages were lost um, in the history of time. Maybe 
it was meant to end like this in this in this blunt way. Um, if you remember, um, at the very start of Mark's gospel, it says the beginning of the good news. And maybe the whole of Mark's gospel is therefore the beginning of the good news. Maybe it was intended to be, this is just the beginning, over to you. What are you going to do? Are you going to be afraid? Are you going to tell people? Are you going to live like the sun has risen as if something new is happening? Is this going to be your story? Is the good news going to be carried out in your life? Maybe that's what's going on. Mark's gospel perhaps was only ever intended to be a beginning and that's why it ends unsatisfactorily uh, because we're the ones who continue it on. I wonder what you think of that. So, um, so some questions which I've kind of talked about in this video. So what do you think the significance of the morning, the sun rising is? What, what about all the newness? What does that mean to you? And why do you think it ended so abruptly and so negatively in a way with the women just being afraid to tell anyone? Why does it end like that? And why is this good news for us today? On one level, this is the definition of the good news, but why does this make a difference to your life today? How can it make you live better? Okay, well, thank you for watching. Um, we'll see you next time. Take care, bye-bye.